that they do for the community. And I want to thank all of you for coming. Wow, what a full house. Great to see you. My name is Ralph Masuo. For the last two and a half years, I've had the honor and privilege of representing you in the Florida House. And for me to maintain that honor and privilege, you have to have trust in me. And to do that, you have to know my philosophy on government and my philosophy on life. So I'll try to explain that to you in this two minutes and 40 seconds that I probably have left. I'm the second generation son of Italian immigrants that came to this country during the early part of the last century when the ravages of World War I were affecting Europe. My grandfather came here with $27 in his pocket and he had a hard work ethic. At that time, there wasn't a lot of social services, but there was opportunity in our country and he worked hard. That hard work ethic and self-responsibility was not lost on my father. And when I was 12 years old, I was picking up a pipe wrench that was almost too large for me to even carry at 5.30 in the morning doing boiler inspections. My parents realized that it was very hard in life, particularly in West Virginia, and they felt that a good education was an important thing. I was the first person in my family to graduate from college. I was the first person in my family to ever have a professional type job, the first person in my family to ever go to medical school. And this country has been very, very good to myself, my wife, and our four kids. And people often ask me, why did you want to go into public service? My answer usually is, I needed to, because I needed to pay back the community, the state, and the country for all they've done for me. Part of my philosophy in life is to always try to work as hard as I can and tell the truth. The truth is a beautiful thing. It's something that we've lost today, oftentimes. It's something that it's very difficult for us to find. It takes a lot of work, and it takes a lot of study. But I challenge you all to look for the truth. Look for the truth in the media. Look for the truth in yourselves, in what you do. I believe education is the primary goal of a society to maintain itself. And our children are the most responsible things that we have that we can work for. One of my goals is to improve education in our high schools by having an alternative pathway for graduation to make our children more ready for careers. Everybody doesn't have to go to college. One size doesn't fit all. Healthcare is another important thing that I want to work on particularly as a patient advocate. And the last thing is I want to protect our environment. I think we need to convert more of our septic tanks to sewers and other things in our environment. Thank you very much. Very good. I, failed, I failed to let the candidates know right up that the League of Women Voters who always help sponsor this event, they do a great job, and they sit down front with the time, the timer and they let the candidates know when your time is almost up. So. Pay attention to all candidates. Pay attention to the lovely ladies from the League of Women Voters. Thank you. Let, let's go ahead now. Paul Reinhardt with his three-minute opening statement. Uh, good evening, people. Um, I actually uh, go back, my family on my father's side, back to the Revolutionary War. And um, I'm pretty blessed to run against my opponent. He's the wealthiest man in the legislature. And I grew up in the New York City housing project. So when you could do that in America, you could do anything. And uh, I moved down here in, in 1979 after I graduated high school to Beverly Hills, and, and I took care of my parents. Uh, they had terminal diseases, and I'm um, now living in that same house that we picked out years ago. Uh, I'll cut to the point because I run out of time. I'm the no sludge candidate. There's been issues of sludge coming to the county. I'm very much against that. I never, never liked sludge. Uh, I'm also the only candidate that's running on, at any level that's against the extension of the Suncoast Parkway through our communities and uh, causing crowds, uh, increased insurance rates, uh, the crime. I just, if, if we want, wanted to move uh, to an area like Clearwater or uh, St. Pete, we would have done that. Okay, and I have an announcement that I'm coming out tonight with. Uh, I'm the last conservative Democrat that I've ever met uh, lately. So uh, just Democrats, supporters of mine, grip your teeth. Uh, I was uh, 
endorsed by the National Rifle Association with an A rating uh, and um, pro-gun by, uh, by the Unified Sportsman in Florida. Um, I also am a, a candidate uh, that was endorsed by the a Personhood Florida Pro-Life PAC. So I'm a Democrat that's uh, pro-gun, pro-life. Uh, let me explain to my Democrats that there was a, a fellow in the 18th Congressional District in Western Pennsylvania, near West Virginia. His name was Connor Lamb, and he ran in an identical district like this, leaning right, conservative, and uh, he was able to make out quite well. And that's not the reason that, that, I, that I am a conservative. I actually grew up uh, as a member of Young Americans for Freedom, the Barry Goldwater Organization. And when I moved down here, all the Democrats were conservative Democrats. I grew up in an Italian area in New York City. And uh, in those clubs, they were very conservative. They were pro-life. And, uh, and actually, they were pro-gun also. They would take their rifles up to upstate New York. And I was told by the chairman of that Democratic club, he said, Paul, you could be a Democrat and you could be conservative. And uh, that's, an, that's an issue that has to get out today when we hear about the Democratic Party, that it does include everyone. Okay, thank you, Jennifer. I'm going to now ask uh, Mike Wright. He's a senior reporter at the Chronicles, been covering politics here for about 25 years, maybe 30. Um, and he's going to come up now and ask questions to the candidates. So, Mike. Candidates, uh, we'll start with uh, uh, Mr. Reinhardt. Um, this is a question that came to us from one of our readers. Do you support the standard stand your ground law as it is? And if not, how would you change it? Mr. Reinhardt. This is one of the reasons that I don't want this to turn into clear water. We had an incident of people arguing over uh, a parking space. Now, uh, the standard ground law, I would recommend uh, so a lot of the, the gun laws are actually approved by the police chiefs, and uh, I believe that it should stand as it is. Oh, go. Mr. Musillo. Yes, I agree with uh, Mr. Reinhardt. I support the standard ground law. I think we have a presumption of innocence in this country, not just for stand our ground, but for a lot of things. And we've seen that played out even recently in the news with the Judge Kavanaugh, uh, I'll call it a debacle. But in our country, we're innocent until proven guilty. And it's very important for individuals that want to use a weapon to shoot someone else to have that innocent proven till guilty. Great, thank you very much. The second question has to do with US 41 and Inverness. US 41 between Inverness and Hernando has been the state's widening list program for decades. What can you, as a state legislator, do to speed things up a bit? Mr. Masulo. Thank you, Mr. Wright. We've actually worked with FDOT on that very same issue. When we first came to office, it was brought to our attention that they had put off expanding 41 for several years. And we found out through the department that it wasn't prioritized by the MPO. And I think it's important now that you all know that it has been prioritized and there is funding in place to do the engineering starting hopefully by the end of 19, 2019 or 2020. Cool. Mr. Reinhardt? You have to lean on these state agencies. That's how I got involved in Tallahassee as a healthcare lobbyist. You have to keep pressuring them. You have to go up. You have to you have to meet with the agency heads like I did. Uh, you have to be on them. My, my opponent works at Seven Rivers Hospital, and ever since I lived here for 39 years, it's a blinking light, and it's worth your life. My brother was in that hospital. My parents were in that hospital throughout the years, and in uh, the 2000s, and the 90s, and the 80s, and always it's worth my life trying to get in and out of Seven Rivers Hospital on 19. So. Uh, my impression is if he can't change that light in front of the hospital that's been there for 39 years that I know of, 
you know, you, you need to lean on these agencies. You've got to be a little tough, and that's where my street savvy from the projects will come in. Okay. And uh, the third question, the last question, Mr. Reinhardt, we'll start with you. You mentioned the parkway in your opening statement. Well, the parkway is being built as of now, as far as I know. The bulldozers are out there. So what do you think should happen to the parkway once it hits 44, State Road 44? What's next for the parkway? Uh, the parkway was originally pitched as uh, a lot of people had a forest that I get flack from. They say it's good for business, good for business, good for business. I wasn't even interviewed by a lot of the business people because they wrote me off when they saw my position. Uh, I believe that uh, since we're speaking about business, we should put up some of these business incubators when it reaches 44, get small business. I'm getting tired of seeing fast food that's not good for your health and big business, hotels and such. So uh, I think we should get the business rolling what, you know, by the time it is 44, you also have that intersection at Cardinal Lane. Let's get the business that they talk about. I don't want a highway bringing sludge trucks to the right level. Thank you very much. Mr. Musillo. I think when we look at our state, we have to realize we have a growing <coughs> aging population. Soon we'll have over 22 million people living in our state and thousands are moving down here every month. Leadership requires us to be proactive in that. Transportation and logistics is important for communities to survive and thrive. The parkway is an excellent vehicle to do just that. I'd like to see it go to 44, and as uh, my staff will tell you, we work tirelessly with, with various agencies involved <coughs> to get it to go to 46. There's a debate right now whether or not there'll be an interchange there or not. And then to extend out on to US Highway 19, perhaps use some of those right of ways and expand that road and head north and east and then tie into I-10 so this area would have access to the deep water ports of Jacksonville. And if I'm elected, I'll continue that pursuit. Thank you, sir. Okay, we'll have now the uh, closing one minute statements and we'll start with Mr. Reinhardt. I came here when I graduated Monsignor McClancy High School in New York City and we picked out a lot in the middle of the street and I just met someone today that was in my high school and I didn't know that, but it was nice. Uh, what we did was we picked out that house. My father, when he came here, said that this is paradise and uh, compared to where we live. And uh, they thrived here, they had a happy retirement here. Uh, and I don't see any reason why we should change this area radically and have to uh, make it an urban center or a pathway for the big cities to come here. We've had tourism for years, tourism thrives, okay? Uh, we just don't need to be a uh, major um, exit for a, a parkway. Originally, they wanted even the coastal connector going through here coming from 75, and that, that, that only got stopped because of the uh, horse farms in Ocala. So I, I want to keep, keep paradise. I don't want to pay it over. Thank you. Mr. Masillo. I believe when you look at any of these candidates up here today, you have to question leadership. I believe leaders need to have a vision to look into the future and then pull back from that future those things that they can change today to make that future a better place for the people today and for the next generations. I believe in servant leadership. And Robert Greenleaf moved that ideology along, but I think it started over 2,000 years ago by another individual that empowered women more so than anybody else in his society that moved to make the people that he served better than they were before. And I'd like to follow that philosophy. And I'll do that as your representative when I ask for your vote. Thank you. Thank you very much, gentlemen.